What is that sound you ask? Welcome to the Rec Show Podcast, a show dedicated to beat makers around the world. Kick back, relax with the host, Golden Mind. Yo, 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 what's good? What is good, everybody? What's going on? Yo, welcome back to the Rec Show Podcast, man. I go by the name of Golden Mind, and you are listening right now to Tatsumaki. Right, he came out with an album called Cosmo Funk. Right now, you're listening to Espresso Groove with a UVV. <laughs> Tatsu, man, yo, you be, yo, man, that that album, man, is high energy, man. So I had to include it, man, because this show is gonna be high energy as well, man. It's dope energy, chill energy as well, man. Take you on a ride, all right? But yo, I hope y'all counting your blessings, not y'all's problems. I go by the name of Gold of Mine. Welcome back, man. Yo, we are going from Tokyo, Japan, all the way to the city of brotherly love with the one and only Jewel C. She's a DJ. She's a beat maker, man. She be doing the raves. She be doing it all, man. Y'all tap. We're going to tap in with Jewel C, man. I asked her. She wishes she said yes. So, yeah, we're going to hear from her, vibe to her music, and, yo, we just going to kick back and relax and just listen to what inspires Jewel C, man. So, Philadelphia Zone, Jewel C, man, welcome her to the show, and that's how we're going to rock out, man. Yeah. Yo, this is going to be a good episode, man. Y'all go ahead and like and subscribe, and we'll be back like that, yo. Peace and love, yo. Yo. What's up? This is Joel C, and you're plugged into the Rec Show podcast with Golden Mind. Golden Mind. I would like, in general, to treat people with much more care and respect. I would like to climb a tall hill, not too tall, sit in the cool grass, not too cool, and feel the sun on my face.
to joints off of her band camp release it's all love man yo this is a a dope vibe i think it fits like right now man we're going into the springtime you know i think it fits right now man so yeah man we're gonna get into the interview right now Ooh, yeah i like this you like it, <laughs> I like it. yo we'll be back with the interview man yeah So welcome to the Red Show Podcast, Jewel C, man. Yo, I just want to get into it real quick, man, for the B-heads or the internets um, that might not know you. Go ahead, please introduce yourself, where you're from, you know, what your name means, how your name was created, you know, and then any associated collectives you might be a part of, you know what I mean? Hey, so I'm Jewel C. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I was born and raised in South Philly. Um, I kind of came up with my name just because my name's Juliana and my nickname is always Jules. My last name starts with a C, but I always like the ocean, so kind of just made it like C S E A, and then Julesy. And that's that's pretty much it. Just combined the two. I work with a lot of different uh, collectives or party throwers in Philly. Um, I'm actually starting my own party soon, but oh, I am not going to announce that yet. But soon I will be associated with a specific collective. Mm. Um, before all like the COVID stuff, I was um, throwing graves uh, with Alt Escape. Um, and that was, I guess, a more prominent collective that I was involved with. I feel like Alt Escape really set the tone for the current wave of electronic dance parties that have been happening in Philly post COVID. I feel like the whole rave scene has just been like exploding pretty much since then. Okay, so, um, so how did you begin your journey into like music and, you know, sampling, DJing? Like, what was that one moment that sparked your interest in creating your own? music and and then going into dj and play for parties and and um you know you know hopefully arenas too you know what i mean maybe i may be speaking this into existence for you man but i see i see that yeah i see that happening you know i've pretty much been a music nerd my whole life i went to like music like a music based middle school like we had to be in like choir learn music theory do music tech um, I mean, I was like started learning the guitar when I was like eight years old. Um, but I started producing when I was like 16, 15, 16. Um, I was like watching a lot of um, those YouTube like lo-fi beats to study to kind of stuff. And I was like, oh, I want to make music like that. And I just started like doing that. I just started making music like that because it was what I liked. And then, you know, I got more into the history of it. Now I understand everything else more, like, just the origins of, like, like uh, you know, I don't really like to call it lo-fi beats anymore, but, you know, just, like, boom bap, hip-hop, that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know, I just, I fell in love with it. I love it so much. And it's not really the kind of style of music I make anymore, but mm. that's the thing about, like, producing. You just evolve and, like, you find your niche and what you like and just keep going and like finding new things that interest you exactly like expanding right so so like 
I always I always do this. I always ask this. Like, can you recommend some must see, read, or listen items for my listeners on their journey in beats and music? Like, and it can be a documentary, YouTube videos, podcasts, um, books, audio books, all that type of stuff, man. Visual, audio visual, comic books, whatever, man. Like anything. I find myself watching a lot of music documentaries. I highly recommend Black to Techno. It's a short directed by um, Jen and Kiru. Um, it's just about like the Detroit techno scene and how that connects with like the rave scene in the UK and all that. Um, yeah, that's really good. Um, I've also probably watched like the whole like hip hop or evolution of hip hop on Netflix is great. Um, you know, the Kanye documentary, everybody's watching that now. Um, those are some things to start with. Oh, uh, Sisters with Transistors. I've heard great things about that. I still need to start that, but another great music documentary to get tap in with, you know. Hey, yo, y'all heard it here first. All right, Sisters with Transistors, the Ye documentary, Hip Hop Evolution, and I'm a, either way, I'm going to put them all in the links. Uh, in the description of the show so y'all can just easily just click you know what i mean click and go directly to what she's recommending and then that you know what i mean that's information that's information that's another perspective that you would have never heard without her recommending or any of our my guests recommending it so yeah man but um yeah man we still tapped into jewel c jewel c we still listening to it's all love right now you're listening to unknown before that was how long, man. So we're gonna get back into the to the interview, man. So um yo man, like I you know, I always do a little bit of at least I, I try to do a lot of research um when I can, but yo, from your research, I noticed like you're doing DJ sets consisting of like you know, like Serato DJ and the turntables and using Ableton Live um to create magic with your DJ sets. Like why this equipment what makes them special to you and then what's one technique that expanded your sound you know if you're willing to share that technique you feel me i do use a serato controller and my laptop most of the time when i'm djing that was just kind of recommended to me when i first started and i just stuck with that i like that workflow um honestly i've been getting into cdjs more just because like traveling and djing it makes it so much easier like getting all my stuff in record box with my usb like really makes it so much easier pulling up to a venue with just that not all this equipment um but yeah um i think something that like kind of expanded my sound like especially when i first started djing like i was djing off a 404 like sp 404 um and so i liked messing with all the effects on there and I kind of just like took that when I started like DJing other kinds of music and like put it on my laptop and like do all like the Serato effects, all that kind of stuff. But I loved DJing with the 404. I honestly like wish I still did that. Or just like sometimes use it as like an effects processor for like my board. I would do that a lot like at first, but maybe I'll get back to doing that now. Yeah, yo, like we. A lot of my guests use the 404, use Serato um, DJ, use Serato Sampler, use Serato... Ah, uh, what's the other one, man? They're making beats on right now. I can't remember, but yeah, man. Um, whatever it is, man, that helps you make magic, always be for it, man. It could be Koala, it could be you know, Reason, Ableton, like anything, man. Just as long as it fits your workflow, and helps you create the magic that you want other people to to hear and vibe to, man. That's all that matters. You feel me? So, yeah, man. So, yo, let me ask you, like, on your band camp, you got two beat tapes, two beat tapes called um, Transcend, and it's all love. Um, and then, but on Transcend, you lin- linked with Jay Jared uh, to pr- produce like four magical tracks. Like, can you? Uh, can you like let us know like how that came together to produce how y'all came together to produce that you know and and I, I honestly I wanted more man four wasn't enough man because I just heard 
so much magic on that joint, man. I was like, damn, man. Like, it was just a morsel, <laughs> like a little jerk Hershey's kiss. Like, you can't eat just one. Like, you know what I mean? I wanted more, man. So, you know what I mean? And then, can you help me, like, what, like, what were your muses when you were creating It's All Love and Transcend? And then, can you speak about creating during a pandemic? Like, I think that's a major one. Like, I know it's winding down right now, kind of, you know, but... Can you talk about the benefits to the creativity or um, what it added to your resiliency? You know? I have two beat tapes out on Bandcamp. The first one is Transcend. I made that with my friend Jared when I was like first starting to like really learn how to produce music well. And like he taught me so much and um, I brought him back on. It's all love too. Like we've got some songs on there together. Um, but yeah, I love those projects so much. Um, it's all love. I those were like a lot of tracks that I had been working on for years. Like even like some from like when I first started making music. Um, and I was really influenced. Like I keep like a playlist of like songs I want to sample. And um, sometimes like when I'm out, I'll like Shazam a song that I think is cool and that I want to sample. And um, just add it to the playlist and um i started getting really into like old like italian music or like from the 70s just like um like italian like like disco stuff or like pop i guess it was back then and um like scores too like and i just took from that and i think i have a lot of like influence of that in this in that album just like sample wise um but I'm happy that it was well received because, you know, like I felt like that project was also just me trying to like, you know, just put something out. I hadn't put any music out really like, too, yeah, I hadn't really put too much music out and like, I just wanted to basically do like a music dump of just like, okay, here's everything that I've been working on and like, it's going to change. I'm going to evolve, but here's what it is right now. And you know, it's all love. Um, when I was making a lot of those songs too, like it was during uh, the first lockdown, and I was like, okay, like I have time now to like really focus and like hone in on like something that I've been wanting to do for a while. So I just kind of sat down and I would like be in my bedroom and like for hours on end, like <laughs> in my parents' house, just editing and like trying not to make too much noise because my mom, like, she, uh, her room was like right next to my room and she, every time I had like the speakers too loud, she'd be like, please lower it. But you know, that's how it is. And, um, you know, when I finally was able to get it done, like, it was, it was a really good feeling. It was a really good feeling to get it all out there. That's dope, man. That's dope. Shout out to moms, man, for not saying, you know, you know what? Turn that off, man. Turn that riff raff off. <laughs> Turn that ruckus off. <laughs> so shout out to your moms, man, for, you know, still helping you um, create, helping you be creative, even though, you know, everybody's going through hard times. They may have been going through hard times trying to figure out how these bills are going to get paid and stuff like that. But yeah, man. So yeah, man, respect to them. Yo. So I always ask this, man. We go into history. Um, the four pillars of hip hop, DJing. MCing, breaking, graphing, right? Those are the four pillars. Um, so, I mean, I kind of know the answer already, but I'm going to ask you anyway, which element did you begin your journey with? And, you know, how did it affect your life when you discovered your element in hip hop? You know, I'm, I'm kind of, yo, yo, you got a track on your um, album, It's All Love. It's, um, it's got the joint with the blue lady from... Uh, the fifth element with uh, Chris Tucker and, you know, the other guy. Um, yeah, but it's dope. I don't know. That just came to my brain real quick. But, yo, it's a it's a dope track. Y'all check out all, It's All Love. Uh, but, yo, can you answer that question for me? Out of the four pillars of hip-hop, I definitely started my journey with DJing. Um, I started DJing for my friend who was uh, Huey. He was uh, rapping in, like, basements in West Philly a lot or just around Philly. And I, he like asked me one day if I wanted to be his DJ, and I was like, yeah, of course. And then 
I just started like playing his tracks. We would do like ciphers. I'd have like, my 404. Like I was just like make little beats and like he would rap over them. And you know, those were like the best times, honestly. And that was around the time that like I realized I wanted to start DJing. Like I wanted to start playing like, my own beats live. So I was like, okay, I guess DJing is the only way I can really perform like that. Like, you know, I was always going to house shows and like watching my friends and bands play or like perform. And I was like, well, I don't do all that, but I make beats and I want people to hear my music. So I might as well start DJing. <laughs> so it just kind of started that way. And then before I knew it, I was like playing like, like not just like house parties, but like warehouse parties. And then, you know, it just turned into what it is now. I, I love that it started the way it did because I feel like I take that a lot of that with me still. After the first rave I DJ'd, I, that was like the moment I really realized that like I would be doing this for the rest of my life because like nothing had felt like that before. Like we were just in this like sweaty, sweaty warehouse and like I, I just felt so in my element like I never had before and like it didn't really matter like the, like the people being there like I was having fun with everybody and like I was curating that like I was playing music that I would be dancing to in my room or just like I would like to listen to and like people were going hard they were going like crazy for it and I never could have like imagined that I guess but it was happening right in front of me and you know I just I wanted to keep going after that and I did and like it's just been like non-stop craziness like I love the chaos it's, <laughs> honestly like it, it's kind of magical <laughs> I'm not
still vibing with Joe C, man. Episode 43 of the Rex Show podcast, man. And you're still listening to It's All Love, man. The uh, beat tape she's got on her band camp, man. So I'm going to leave a link in the description to her band camp as well. Y'all go ahead and support, man. Joe C, man. I'm going to tell y'all like this, man. I always say this, yo. If you buy an album, it's an investment to say to the artist, go ahead and make more. Make more of this. Like, yes, we love it. We we want more of it. All right? <laughs> yeah. Yo, let's get back into it, man. So, yo, Jewel C, man. Um, I created this game called Superheroes, you know. Hit, insert the effect. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> like, um, you play it by the name of your childhood teenager and DJ beat maker or music producer superheroes and just tell us like why they were so important at these specific times in your life and major key alert no dramas off limits man this is you know a history lesson for people to you know do some research and um pick up on people that they may have never heard of you know Ooh, okay so now we're gonna play superheroes i like i like this game <laughs> um all right so i think my childhood um music producer music superhero would be probably like stevie wonder um you know i i listen to him a lot i I just remember like being in school and like wanting to do like projects on him i don't i don't know why um teenage probably new hobbies or like um mad lib i guess I feel like those are two people that I looked up to a lot. Um, I mean, that seems so recent. I'm only 22, so I wasn't a teenager that long ago. Um, Now I feel like, I don't don't know, I love like Flying Lotus and Thundercat. I look up to them a lot as like musical geniuses. Um, Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's my superheroes. Yo, Stevie Wonder, man. Yo, as a kid, I always listened to him. Him, uh, Lionel Richie. Um, there's a lot of people on, on radio, man, on Power 99 FM, man. So, especially like when I was on Punishment, I always had the radio. That's that's exactly how I, <laughs> how I listened to, like, a whole bunch of different people, you know? So, yeah, man, thank you for that. So... Yeah, can you tell us how music, fitness, engineering, you know, know, music and fitness work together for you and your creative process and expression? I know you, you know, ride your bike uh, because you got to, on It's All Love, like you riding your bike everywhere, you know? So I just had to ask that question, you know? I feel like, man, like I've been trying to include fitness a lot more in my routine. I ride my bike a lot. Like a lot a lot it's like my main mode of transportation in the city so i feel like i'm always blasting music every time i ride my bike i'm a bluetooth speaker so you know i want to when i make music i'll try to send it to my phone i'll bike around i'll listen to the music and, you know it gets me it gets like a, like a good feel to just like see how that translates um i think i i, I think that's how I'm answering this question right i think so <laughs> oh yeah you good yeah. <laughs> you good yo um so like i i mean just doing the research again like i know you perform dj sets for like mad locations around philly maybe in other states and stuff like that like can you just talk about what the live experience feels like and you know like what that with the energy um is like with a with a good crowd, you know, like and can you like shout out any other like DJs, beat makers you're inspired by and you know, kind of why uh you're inspired by, them, you know? I have definitely performed a lot of DJ sets in a plethora of locations, yes. Um I feel like every spot has its own thing. It's very different everywhere you go. Um you know, the the energy is always going to be different depending on the location. I feel like that's like the most important part of like what makes a great set is like if the location was great, like then that'll impact how I'm playing too. Um, 
I love playing in warehouses. I love playing in like a forest somewhere deep out. It's like, not, you know it's not gonna get shut down because what cop is gonna go digging into the forest like for 10 minutes <laughs> to find a group of kids playing some music. But yeah, I just, I just love like, like being like feeling like I have my own space you know I feel like sometimes uh, like I like playing at clubs or bars but like it's a different feeling and the energy is not the same I can't like get my set off how I want to and like you know people can't go as feel like they're going as crazy as they want to either so you know I, I love playing at like just discreet locations I feel like that helps me like just transcend <laughs> basically um, yeah you know with a good crowd they're just gonna like you, you play off like the people and the people play off you like I'll always like play whatever I want to play really I'll, I'll play whatever I want to play and then usually it's good enough that people fuck with it or people mess with it and <laughs> you know I try to just like see it. and then if they like something specific then I'll try to play to that too you know it's it's, it's all like give and take um other DJs and beat makers I'm inspired by um man there, there are so many there's so many like local and like, non-local. I mean, my, obviously, like my my homies, like Jared. Like I learned so much from him. Beautiful man, Benny X. Like those are my guys. They like they really like taught me a lot when it comes to making music. Um, and, you know, I love like Grimes and Toki Monster. Um, who else? Oh, Peggy Goo. She's great. Um, there, there's really so many people I look up to, and like DJs in Philly, like there's so many people killing it right now, there's like Teth and Cooley and Low Iron and Pump Fake, there's just, there's so many people that inspire me and like I love playing with, you know, it's a, it's a good feeling. Um... Yeah, there's so many people I want to shout out. There's really so many people I want to shout out. Because um, the scene is so deep here. And I, I love it. I love that I got like a nice group of people to work with. Um, but yeah, there's like... There's just so many people. <laughs> <laughs> I know, like a lot of people, man. So it's, you know... And I hope nobody like takes it personal when somebody is like asked on the spot, like, you know, is there anybody you're inspired by and you know your name's forgotten? But yo, don't don't take it personal, like yo, it's a, it's just so many people that give inspiration and don't even know they give inspiration, you know. So you know, take that as a like a badge of honor, man. You know what I mean? Like girl or woman, uh, you know, girl, woman, man, you know, all that type of stuff. So. Yeah, yeah, we gonna go like that, man. But, yo, so, you're a Bandcamp and digital streaming platform user. How do you think beatmakers can benefit from using platforms like these and emerging tech such as Web3 and, you know, blockchain, cryptocurrency, and stuff like that, yo, if you know about it? I'm honestly still trying to understand, like, you know, uh, Web3 and crypto and blo the blockchain, all of this, like, emerging tech, um... I, I get the gist of it, I guess, but you know, it's like I don't I, I don't know specifically how I feel about it. But um, you know, I do think some of it's really cool. Like I thought that like I, I was tapped into like selection radio. They um started uh, doing part of their radio show on Web three on some uh I think it's called Sounds or something like that, some kinda like web3 platform and i think it's a really great way to like pay like the, i don't know like it's like it, it gives like a like for collectors like they can like 
said that they own this like ep- radio show or this episode and then like the DJs get paid out really well and the producers get paid out really well from it and you know that's really cool because you know the music industry is like not doing the best right now and paying artists like what they deserve like so you know it's really cool to see like we can kind of take it in our own hands with these like new emerging technologies um and i'm really curious to see how that's going to evolve in the future yeah you know as, as long as people are building use cases for nfts and stuff like that like I definitely think it's going to be good. But again, we're in the infancy stage of this thing, man. So, yeah, I'm seeing dope stuff already, man. And I need to, you know, start getting more ETH um, and more, you know, different cryptos and stuff like that, too. But I'm already invested. But, yeah, man, I'm trying to get my girls to create some NFTs and stuff like that, too. So, yeah, man. But, yo, final question, man. What should the internets look out for from Jewel C? in 2022 and how can the internet tap into you and your music and you know plug your socials any projects and collaborative efforts you might got going on any new shows dj sets you're gonna be playing around philly or anywhere you know go ahead and plug them right now yo man there's so many things i feel like 2021 was like big year big year for me you know just like getting back into the swing of things and now i feel like i gotta top it because like last summer was so great how am i gonna top last summer i have to i have to do something crazier (laughs) you know that's where i'm at right now but you know i'm very excited for the future i feel like last summer was only the beginning and Oh, it's like this I feel like it's only gonna be the beginning for like the next <laughs> few years even and then you know stuff is gonna take off however it does um, but I will be you know I'm working on some projects right now like music wise like I guess like album wise EP wise whatever and then also just like other projects that I want to people to be involved in you know like party scene um some art stuff you know i I just want to hit every last bit of my (laughs) interests um i'm excited though i think that i'm gonna do some cool stuff and i can't wait to do cool stuff with my friends this year um but yeah you know you could just i feel like i'm very active on instagram like i don't know why that has been my app of choice but that's where i'm like sharing a lot of like things that i'm doing or things i see or i'm inspired by and like music stuff but you know maybe that'll change this year who knows tiktok is cool sometimes um, I don't know. You know just, just, it, just find me. Just <laughs> it, you'll find me if you find me. I'll, I'll maybe I'll be in your city. Maybe you'll find me online somewhere. But I'll I'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just like Julesy on everything though. Um, I'm on Twitter too, but uh, it's like me speaking into the void. It's not. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's whatever. That's for fun. That's where I go to kind of be myself a little more. But, you know. Find me if you find me if you find me. <laughs> Yo, y'all heard it here first, man. Yo, Joel C. All right, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, DJ, beat maker, man, collaborator. Uh, you know. Yo, you may see her in, in the different spots and the raves and all that stuff, man. So go ahead, you know, look her up, man. Tap into her, follow her on her socials, follow her on her band cam, show love, man. You know what I mean? And I want to say thank you to Jewel C for allowing me to spotlight you, man. And um, you know what I mean? Like, yo, I'm just keep going, man. Like, I'm inspired by your music. I listen to your music. It's high energy. It's it's 
yo, man, it's good energy feeling. You know what I mean? Like, I honestly feel like it's just good energy that I get when I listen to your music. And, you know, when I need that pick me up, boom, I go to go to your music and vibe like that, you know? So, yeah, man. So, shout out to you. Thank you for sharing your music and, you know, just continue being you and uh, all that stuff. <laughs> so, all right. So, yo, man, that's another episode of The Rec Show. Episode number 43 with Jewel C, man. This is going, it's available on Apple uh, Podcasts, uh, Google Podcasts, Spotify, uh, you know, Bandcamp. Go ahead direct, and definitely check out the Bandcamp ones, man. Support directly if you can. And um, yeah, man, follow, like, Leave a comment um, on any of the, the podcast DSPs that y'all might be tapped into. And yeah, man, um, go ahead and leave it like, yo, I'm a, here's a call to action, man. Anybody you want me to tap in with and have them on the show, let me know uh, in, the, in the comment section, all right? Or, or send me a message on Twitter or something like that, man. And you know I'll get to it, man. I'll get to the research. I'll reach out to them. If they say yes, they say yes. If they say no, they say no, man. Duality, you feel me? Yo, man, but yo, make sure y'all count your blessings, not your problems, man. We about to tap into this J. Jared and Jewel C. Transcend album, EP. And uh, we're going to vibe like that, man. So I'll see y'all next week on another episode of the Retro Podcast, man. Peace and love, yo. Yeah.
Thank you.
Mars represent every living person on the planet. The white lights are humans. And these are the mutants. They tell like younger kids or other producers like, that's cheating. You can't really be said, but for bruh, like when it comes to this producing shit, you can do whatever you want. You've been listening to the Rec Show podcast. Be sure to subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Remember three things: believe in your music, take care of your mental, become the best version of yourself. Until the next one, Golden Mind signing off. Peace and love, yo. Be the best, you got to work overtime. To be the best, you got to work overtime. These young boys getting better. This is not like the NBA when you can retire. Like this is, you have to keep going.